Hello, welcome pen friends. Welcome to another uh, ink profile out of Ink Flight 22. And today we're doing mustard. Um, I want to say it's kind of like a gold ink, but it, it also falls under golden brown or, you know, that kind of color. So it's pretty interesting. So let's just dive right in. I've got one ready to put in the bath test for us so we can see how this ink is going to react to being in fully submerged in water. <laughs> and this is the last ink we did. This this was actually this one uh, back here, the Namson, the green. And a whole bunch of sort of yellowy color came out. Isn't that interesting? It, it, it totally changed, but it did stay readable. So that shows you, um, you may not want to do an envelope with it, but you certainly, you know, if it gets a little water on it, you're not going to lose everything. So that's very interesting. So let's dive in and we'll let it kind of marinate in the water there. It seems like these are a little bit more uh, water resistant, so it's very interesting. I've had a couple days with this ink because it's just been extremely busy. So I have actually written a little more with this one. And here it is right here. It's kind of the first thing I thought. Let's get over to my notes because that way I can stick better to it. Um, and here it is right here. I've got it in the 1.1 millimeter Goulet nib in the Serendipity, and I've also got it in the uh, Heinz Custom Pen with a fine Yowo nib. So we've got those two to look at, and we've got more samples in the other books. But my first impression was, um, you know, that it kind of resembled Cafe Crema, and then the more I looked at it, the more I realized it, it actually has more in common with KWZ Standard Honey. Uh, at least in the way I'm perceiving the color, and we'll look at some comparisons in a minute. But I found it at Anderson Pens for $16 for 38 mil, and right uh, at the moment it's listed as a dollar seventy-five for a three mil sample. That could change any time. So I mean, I, I I was seeing that it's regularly a dollar eighty-five, but that's just a, a dime difference. So, so um, it did have quite a bit of shading on the Toy River. It's got edging and shading and you know I almost want to say a little bit of sheen on there but it's pretty um it really is in my estimation it's looking better in the uh, broader nib and yet on some papers it does quite well in the fine nib it just depends so let's take a good look across a couple of different notebooks and let's start in here this is the little notebook that came as a pen goodie in one of the ink flight boxes and uh, this is my yesterday's gratitude. I, um, so I was writing with the ink yesterday, and I'm, I've still got it in my uh, pens today. Uh, since I knew that I wasn't... I almost got this video yesterday, but it just wasn't working out time-wise or anything. So isn't that interesting? It's got the dark shading. where it, So it goes from kind of a brown to a gold. You know, almost not quite yellow. That may be a little distortion. My lighting is a little bit difficult but you know we do have some brightness coming in and then so in this notebook I did just stick with the stub nib um, it looks really really pretty I think in the other notebook I've got both going um, just you know it shows up and and the stub nib does show it off so if you like that color family um, particularly well this is this is a contender let's see here okay this is the cafe note it's uh, Tomoe River Paper uh, by Nanami Paper Company. Um, and we've got two. Let's start with yesterday's because I kind of... Okay, so what happened yesterday, I was just using the stub nib. And, you know, I wrote in here and, and it looked good. And I thought, oh, I forgot to do it in both. So, being, you know, because I knew I was probably going to lap over onto another day, then today I started out with the, the fine nib. Uh, that's the Heinz Custom Blue Storm Pen with a number six, you know, regular fine nib, yo -wo. And I didn't like it on this paper too much. I really didn't. But some some of the other papers, it looked better. But this this was just, I don't know, to me, it kind of lost something on here. And it was a little bit scratchy, which the nib is nice. So I, I was puzzled. And then just so you could see them side by side... I wrote in here for the rest of my uh, notes on my intermittent fasting and everything, I wrote with the stub today. So that, that kind of gives you a side-by-side -side <clears throat> comparison. Now, 
it, it looks a little different on some of the samples. So let's get right into those. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I think with the furnace running, I've just got such a dry sinus. I don't even have the right glasses on. Okay. Um, Tamoy River paper, 52 gram. And there they are down here. Now on here, I didn't have any problem with it. In fact, I see some shading and I liked it. Uh, it, it didn't drag or act scratchy on this paper at all. So that's funny. That's just how it felt to me though. It felt good. But I still believe that the stub shows it off better because of the relative lightness of it. Okay, and then on Loistrum, it looked nice on here, I thought. It usually does. This this gives a nice opportunity for the ink to get on the page. And let's just make sure it didn't bleed through. No, there was no bleed through on there. Um, and I did like the feel of the writing in the fine nib on the Loistrum. That's a personal opinion, I realize. But. Okay, and then... Okay, so on Claire Fontaine, um, it did fine in the stub nib. Then I didn't like the experience of writing on the Claire F the Fontaine with the fine nib. But but I am often that way. I don't like feedback. And it definitely was dry enough that I got some feedback that I don't particularly like with that. So <clears throat> that's just a note. I don't know if anyone else feels that same way or not. But Okay, then very similar on the Rhodia. Um, this is Rhodia Dot Pad 80 gram paper. I liked the experience in the stub, <clears throat> and I wasn't crazy about it in the fine nib. Um, keep it in mind that I'm not a fine nib person overall either, so. <coughs> oh my. <clears throat> I'll be glad we don't have to run the furnace so much. <laughs> okay, here's CVS Caliber paper. Um, it was okay in the stub as far as how it felt writing, and then not so much with the with the fine nib. In fact, yeah, if I remember right, I probably should have put an unhappy face. I didn't like it. I didn't feel like it did the, the ink any favors at all, really. It didn't look very good on there. Okay, then back into a, a more economical paper, the Office Depot College ruled paper. And uh, it's it's good on there. You know, it, it tends to flow on this. This, this is a nice paper. It's slightly toothy, but it, it is smooth, really, at the same time. So I, I have a good writing experience with anything on this. The only thing is from time to time it'll bleed through so I normally check. <coughs> Excuse me. No, there's no bleed through. Let's get a drink of water here while we get our panel. Um, let's get the color panel. This is a little bit interesting this time. Uh, I put it right in the middle <laughs> because this panel displays everything I have in this color family. So here's our ink of the day right in the middle and I'm going to get a drink of water. My goodness. Huh. Don't know why but my sinuses are completely dried out with the gas furnace running. <clears throat> so and there it is right in the middle and as you can see right below it is KWZ Standard Honey and it's almost like you just take the dial just a little bit make it darker more a little more saturated but you're in that same ballpark I think and I thought that was really interesting um it it kind of goes out of the range of the cafe crema which surprised me I thought they were going to be real comparable but it's much more similar to <coughs> KWZ honey and then of course it's not the same as the Apache sunset that's so much brighter and up here in the right hand corner is Papier Plume Caramel. That's another ink that many of us are are familiar with. And that's that seems lighter and in a different sort of a brownish rather than gold. Very, very light brown. But I also liked how it compared to the whiskey copper, but that is a shimmer ink, a pearlescent shimmery from Diatramentus. So it's hard to really compare that. If you can see all that shimmer, <laughs> there really isn't much comparison. So um, this is not a color family that I have many of. In fact, underneath here was uh, <laughs> the very bright black stone golden wattle, which is really a yellow. But I thought I'd just use tape and put it on here so we could, you know, we could really closely look at them side by side. Especially this one. Um... I do feel KWZ Standard Honey compares well to it, but you're just talking about a little little uh, darker brown, a little more tone there. 
very interesting. Hmm. And then we'll see what happens when it, it goes on the uh, visual journal, which was very interesting too. But I think I'll leave it right in the middle. I think it kind of belongs there, really. And those are the closest that I could come. So, let's see. First, let's look at this. Okay, so it's probably going to play out like the other two have. The, you know, where there's quite a bit left and you can read it, but it certainly isn't very, you know, it's not pretty or anything. It doesn't retain its normal color. Okay, let me get that water off my hands. Let's look at the visual journal. Now, this wasn't stunning as far as I'm concerned. It was rather, mm, you know, we've seen some pretty dramatic ones. So this was just, I don't want to say boring, but um, not much emerged except for that lighter yellow color that came out from the, the original color. Let's see. Let me get that off of there and see. We can see. Um, so it did, you know, it lightened up some. And then in places, it, it has its shading and the darkness. <clears throat> and then over here, I guess I used quite a bit less um, ink. It started here and just sort of circulated. Probably was two little drops. <coughs> um, you know, in terms of, like, totally personal conclusion, this definitely, when I'm done with the sample, I, I don't need to see any more of this because I just like brighter and darker inks, that's all. But for some people, it may really be, it may really be an option because if you're trying to go a little bit less intense than, than the KWZ Standard Honey, <coughs> um, then, you know, it may be, it may be a good option. And, of course, you got a pretty good look at how it looked in that stub nib, which showed it off pretty good. So, let's talk about what's next. Um, let me get the panel. Okay, so we're moving right along, and we're going to go next to this ink here, Go Gung. Oh, yeah, okay. Let me, I wanted to just read what that said from Ink Journal, because they have really interesting things to say in there. And then we'll close out, I think. But I, it, sometimes... You learn a lot just by reading that little... Okay, here it is. It says, um, Gogang is a deep earthy brown that is also inspired by Seoul City. Okay, so these inks come from uh, Korea. And I thought it was really neat how... Yes, it does look brown, but look at the purple coming out. That's kind of in interesting. And uh, we should see something that interests us, I think. When we start looking at this real closely in the in the two nibs, the stub and the fine, and then when we do the visual, um, that special effects in the visual journal, I can't wait to see that. So we're moving along. It's a little slow because this is a really, really busy week leading up to Thanksgiving. And I had a really nice opportunity today to spend time with a family member. Um... And so, you know, I went for it. I said, oh, we'll, we'll get them. We'll get them each done in order. And it just to be a little bit of a, uh unusual schedule. But I think it works. We know that this is next. And then we're headed for the other three. So thank you so much for joining me. And keep those comments coming. I think it's really fun to hear. I like to hear what, what you all think of the inks, too. Um, you know, I, I was worried about doing this... Um, <clears throat> excuse me, this ink profile, because I was worried I'd be too negative about the ink. Um, so far, this is the one that really impressed me, because it was nice and saturated, and it looked good in both nibs and that kind of thing. But, you know, um, it's fun to learn about all these, and we were only invested with a two mil sample, so it's not like I have a whole bottle or something. I would be, you know, I would only... I, I just wouldn't be too happy if I had a whole bottle of some of the ones that don't uh, show as dark on the page. So, when I start rambling, I know that's the end. The end, okay? I'll see you next time with the Go Gung one, and we'll see how that looks. Bye for now.